So yes, here's the dead people. This is where you'll find a sergeant for that guy. Or what's left of, what, what's left is right of his wife. And yes, it'll be a bitter battle. For me, afterwards. Alright, we're gonna keep these guys as is, so camp. And then let's start this up. The Lost Detachment. In a narrow mountain pass, Reino Portez identifies the site of a battle and locates the remains of a dozen fallen soldiers. Judging from the state of the decomp decomposition, they've been dead for several weeks. The markings of, the, of their equipment identified them as a detachment of Norigo's troops, so you can basically secure the area or look for Lewis's medallion. Let's just secure the area. You order your people to, to, out two by two to scout the area for signs of people who did this. Meanwhile, you might as well search their bodies, so look for the medallion. You go over four or five of the bodies before you find a silver locket stained with dry blood around the neck of what may well have once been a 31-year-old woman with long black curls. Inside is a small but highly detailed portrait of Marin um, Kukero. Take the medallion. Portero's voice rings out from further down the pass. Capitan! Capitan Fuxa, the enemy is here. They were waiting um, for us in the ravine. So regroup on me, get the supply cards in the crevice and get ready to fight. Your people scramble to prepare for the impending battle. Unfortunately, you have plenty of advanced warning because you had the tactical foresight to scout out the air first. So everybody is good and ready for time. It starts to rain arrows. Begin the battle! Alright, let's bring in Rada. We'll bring in Gabriel. I'll bring in Teresa again. Let's bring in, um... Yeah, let's bring in Isabel. Why not? I'll bring out, uh, Rita. And I'll bring out Syria. So three soldiers, the scout, the hunter, and a doctor to battle. And flank enemies to deal more damage. Good advice from you, game. Good advice. Alright, so preparation phase. Essentially in this battle you have this guy down here, he's a veteran warrior. And then all the way up the pass over here you have five more guys. A recruit warrior, a man-at-arms warrior, a recruit trapper, a recruit warrior, and a man-at-arms trapper. So for this type of battle, what I like to do, I generally like to, um, you know, try and make it difficult for these guys to try and get to me a little bit. While I try and you know sneak around and deal with this guy down here. So what we're going to do, we're going to place a few barricades. Like so. And I'll position the guy in the shield there. Sarah will go down here, as will Rita. I'll position a scout over here. The hunter over here, and a doctor over here. And essentially, they're going to guard the flank of these guys while these guys go deal with the veteran down here real quick. Alright, now, note that with these um, barricades, I can shoot over them. But these guys are kind of out of range, as you can see. It actually lists it right there. They're out of range. So initially, we're just going to move you out to here. And... That's just close enough to get a chance at hitting these guys, and that's literally all I, can, all, all I can get, a chance, for now. Let's go after the uh, Mad Arms Warrior, I think. And of course it's a miss, because it's long range, but oh well. And if I want to, I can do the same with the soldier over here. Literally, there's no point in, like, you know, not using a ranged weapon for her, I guess, at this point, because they're way too far away to really attack me, so... You attack. So Isabella got the shot, but she uh, missed. I'll change her back to the shield. And I'll have you come out here too and take a shot. And of course, you know, all three misses, but whatever. You know, it's a little chance that D D20 rolls to hit him. Now these guys are gonna go for the veteran warrior. He can basically move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can move like up to maybe here if I, if he wants to, so. I don't want to get hit by this guy, I think, so let's just go like this. And I'll move you down here. Basically, we're going to maybe lure him over here, or maybe lure him over here. And you can move over to here.
All right, let's get this going. Let's see what they do. So basically, he's going to advance really fast on me because, you know, he's got nothing else to do at the moment. As you can see, they can move really far. But not yet quite far enough to get to my guys, really. They can only move so far. All right, that guy did ant anticipate opening, so I gotta watch out for uh, the critical strike that'll eventually be coming from him. And all these guys move nice and close, so I'll get nice, easy shots on them now. And I wanna watch out for this guy still, so I want him to come to me, not you know the other way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's like as far as he can go to attack me, eight moves, because I'm pretty sure he's like a scout, the warrior, so eight moves for him, eight moves for my scout. So four, four. I'm gonna move you here. And we'll take one pot shot and miss. And you can move up over to here. Attack. Miss. And it's gonna have the scout move over to here for now. These guys over here have their hands full, but let's see what they can do. So note that I have a, uh, you know, basically 82% chance to hit, you know, the guys in front of me. Really, I can hit all these guys, but the people who concern me the most are probably gonna be these warriors. I'm gonna take out this warrior here first, I think, the man arms warrior, so boom. And he blocked it all well. He'll take a shot. And he missed, but that's to be expected. And I'm actually gonna have her just defend in a moment, so we're just gonna move you like this. You're gonna move around the rocks. And I'm gonna have you move to here. You're gonna move down to here. And I'm gonna have this person do flaws defense. Isabel, you're you're my uh, you know my peaceful, non-loyal type of person, right there. So what's gonna happen? She's gonna basically get an increase in defense here, 25. So good, big um, defensive reduction of you know, attacks on her. And uh, we're gonna deal with this guy a bit in a moment. Finally, he takes an attack, but you know he'll be the only one attacking here. They can only go after the barricades, those guys there. So I'll slow them down for a moment while I take out this warrior and then get my other guys to come back up. As you can see, he can only move right there, that warrior, so he can't get close enough to really, you know, deal with my guys. And he defends. Alright, well, Rita's gonna move like this, and we're gonna start killing this guy. Boom. Boom. And this guy can still get his uh, critical strike on me, so I'll be very careful of that, but... I guess we're gonna have to use like the weak attack here, maybe hope for a finish, and there he goes. So he's out of the way, no more worry about that. Let's get this person up here as fast as possible, as well as the other two. The scout will be able to get back up here really fast, so that's good. These guys will be a little bit sluggish, but they'll get up there fast enough. All right, now I've got to deal with these guys over here. He sent this recruit in first, and this guy's in back there. Now, I can't really get flanking strikes in this guy, but I can hold him off in a moment, which is good. Now, I don't usually do this, but you can try using quick shot. Quick shot basically lowers your accuracy by a lot, but you basically get, you know, two shots on this guy. So I basically have 50% chance times 50% chance to hit this guy. At close range, it can sometimes help you, but it's not usually going to help you much, but we'll try this. One shot, and there's a hit. Two shots. Big if if I'll kill him, but I might be able to kill him with the doctor, and then I'll have one guy less to worry about, so let's try it. Go! And there goes that guy. So one war is down. And I move this guy's like this. This will basically hopefully protect my doctor a little bit from attacks from these guys, and then we'll basically keep pulling him off there. 
I'm about to take big attacks up there now, which is going to suck, but hopefully I can hold out a little bit. So end turn. He chased my barricade again. Oh, he poised my soldier, so that's going to hurt a lot. He hits the barricade. And tried a quick shot. Basically, there's his quick shot going off me on me twice. Alright, I want to get basically her healed up, but first things first, we're going to go here. And let's take a shot at the warrior. Try healing up Burial a little bit, or, um, you know, uh, Reynes. And note that doesn't cure the, uh, the poison with uh, the basic restore here. There is an ability to restore poison so you get rid of it, but the doctors don't get that until they get higher ranked, so not just yet. And let's go boom. And we're just going to go here to prevent flanking attacks in case they do get through that barricade and run at me, so I don't want that happening. Let's have you move all the way up to here. And as you can see, they're, they're moving pretty fast, these guys, at least, because I'm making move, not attack anything or guard. But they still have the ways to get up here. Alright, and turn. Alright, there goes one barricade, so that guy's gonna get through. Oh! Hit me with a blowgun again. There's another strike on the soldier. Another one. A lot of strikes on the soldier there. Alright, sadly I can't get these guys in range just yet, but I'm going to try taking, you know, some damage off on this guy, so let's do that. Boom! Now, I think what I want to do here is have you attack him. And then let's do a simple melee attack with this, right after you just sneak. Let's sneak you right here. Poke. Get the flanking strike to guarantee the kill. Make sure I have enough damage, for example. And sadly, I can't restore this soldier, so that's going to be a bit of an issue. I might be able to get, you know, runas away from this guy, but it's going to be, you know, an uh, opportunity attack for this guy, too, so... At best, all I can really do here is just try and, you know, hold these guys off with, you know, a little bit of attacks, and let runas go down. Hey, the doctor got a hit! Little chance to be damaged, you got a hit. Alright, I think what we want to do here... I'm actually going to have the scout move up over here, and we're going to have like this guy move all the way up to here. We're going to get all these guys up here. It's one attack on Syria there, but whatever. And then we'll get you all the way up to here. So, she's sadly going to go down in a moment, but oh well. I can't really do anything about it. Oh, you try a quick shot. And you got one hit. Ow. And there goes Arenas. I know it's gonna happen. There she goes. Alright, let's deal these guys. This guy's really weak, so he shouldn't be too much issue to take out with one strike, so boom. Down he goes. I think we'll have Rita move all the way up to here. And I think I'm gonna do a sneak right over to here. Strike. Strike. I'll have the doctor do a restore on this guy. Syria. Move down here. And I'll have the hunter cover here and take a shot. Boom. One miss. So, you know, quick shots have a much higher chance of missing. Don't use quick shots if you really needed that shot, but here I didn't really need it, so. Oh, normally um, equipment lost, that kind of sucks, but oh well. Boom. Boom. And boom. Bye bye. So, if she got harmless lacerations, that's good because it doesn't mean she'll have much of an injury. She only got hit by dagger, so, you know, it's harmless. Not that, you know, that dangerous. Dax impart to your discipline and your preparations. Your men beat down the attack. While your servants bury the corpses of Nargo's men, your troops recover what they can from the ambushers. 
So basically we got a little bit more equipment and we got a little bit more uh, cash. And that's basically it. You found Louis' corpse from the west rest of the detection in the mountains. Bring her medallion back to her husband Marin and sent in name with trash news. So yeah, I'll have to do that. Since I got these guys leveled up, I think it's a good time to maybe level up someone. And I think because I'm having such difficulties with like, you know, hunting, it might be a good idea to have maybe like, you know, either like the doctors or this hunter here get an upgrade for a little bit more. Uh, you know, chance basically to um, hunt. And it's going to take a quick look at these guys. You're a bow user, you're an archivist user. I think what we're going to do... I'm going to upgrade Sanchez here, I think. Because I sh should have at least one of these doctors get healed up. Or, you know, uh, just upgraded up. And something I really like to do with doctors is I like to give them, like, good patient. Or I like to give them the uh, um, good constitution. Basically, this will basically have us so they have a chance of avoiding damage over time from a poison attack. So, you know, I want to worry about her getting poisoned and, like, dying from it again, hopefully. So maybe I can do that. We'll get this. She'll also get the gain, the gain cure here, which will be very helpful to her. This will basically let her uh, cure poison from enemy or from your friendly, so that'll help a lot. And then it's going to boost up her hunting, so she's a little bit better at that. I can help out a little bit. Equipment-wise, I'm going to give her a little bit more armor, so you know she gets that back. And we're just going to get her, uh, you know, move stuff upgrade a little bit there. And I think I'll just give um, Gabriel another boost to her uh, max lock there a little bit. So that's done. Now I know I'm getting very close to the Megwin mines up here where I'll find Esterban. That's for the quest, the uh, Esterban quest. I'm not going to do that just yet. Basically, um, it's kind of difficult to do like you know some of this stuff early on, so I'm going to wait a little bit. Just build up a little bit of experience. We'll basically go back to these cairns here in the mountains, and I'll make my way back to Santa Domingo for now. This will be a plan. All right, let's have you do, let's see here. So you can do some hunting because, you know, I helped her, you know, get a little bit of a boost in that so she can be helpful. She's almost as good as the regular hunters. You can just go back to, you know, doing this. So we're going to have that doctor now do that. You can keep doing what you're doing. Isabella needs a doctor, but I can do that myself. So we don't have to waste a doctor to do that. And then we'll just continue on from there. Ration wise, I'll allocate meat. That's fine. And we'll just camp. We have Feftus some Metal, which kind of sucks, but um, Isabel is back in action, so that's cool. She can help me out. Now let's get up to this uh, Cairn over here. Let's uh, expand the screen a little bit so I can see what's going on. So track the mountains, another one picked up, a little bit more experience. Pick that up. And we'll have Isabella do some guarding. And we'll leave everyone else as is, so camp. Pick that up. Now, this Karen's over here on like the far side of the mountain, which kind of sucks. Or no, I can get to it. Let's do that then. I might have to walk all the way around to get to this one, but I guess I, I'm lucky on that aspect, not having to. So there's another one done. That gold, that one requires I have to walk around to get, I think. Yeah. Let's go through these herbs. So we'll get those. Go our way to that way. Uh, you can do some herbalism, because I got extra, you know, I got at least six, so I can get at least six from that. And we're almost got our pickaxe upgrade, so that's good. Unlock pickaxe one, so that's out of the way. As the Karen from down there from before. Let's make our way back up here a little bit. Let's get back on this path up here. Just having a quick look around for all those like nice little mountain cairns. 
Um, let's have you get back to hunting. You are going to do some tinkering on the axe now. And camp. Looks like we lost some food, so that kind of sucks, but oh well. And there's a bit of gold up here, a bit of uh, loot up here. Viables and metals and stuff. Quicksand! With no warning, Rosa Petal appears to be suddenly swallowed by the earth right before your eyes. And Adrian Kerver uh, walking beside her barely has time to stop before taking one step to the side and disappearing into the ground as well. Both experts and members quickly resurface, flinging their arms while he's shouting for help. Panic! Somebody from behind shouts quicksand. Quick, gets a length of rope from the carts. As what seems to be far too long, one of the servants brings a rope. Both of the unfortunate experts are now barely have their heads above the filthy sludge. Um, in this case, I want to rescue my hunter. Basically, this is like an either or type of situation. I want to rescue the hunter because I need her for, you know, getting my food, su food supplies. So you throw the rope to enter the server. The uh, hunter struggles to grab hold of the lifeline and, you know, she, you basically pull her in. But now the other person is getting louder and more desperate and she basically goes under. Um, basically, uh, basically get her back to safe, safe from ground. But she's she's going to be a little injured because she's basically got um, sand in her throat, so to speak. And for some reason, I got a piece of equipment here that I haven't used. Put that on. So um, note that basically this person now, you know, mildly diseased. That's what happens with quicksand. So we basically we get one out of, out of commission. You get the choice from which one, but you know it's not much of a choice, so to speak. Sometimes. Let's go up to this cairn up here. So yeah, I need, I need to treat her. And we'll basically camp and continue on. So yeah, we lose a little medicine to heal her up, but oh well. There's another Karen out of the way. Now, I don't think I can get down here without going around, Sally, so... We've basically reached a point where I have to turn back. And you know what, it's probably better just to, you know, go back towards the settlement down by the coast. So I'll do that instead, I think. Because I don't think I can get out to here. Nah, I have to go walk around to do that too. So this way we go. Has this little detour to get that, uh, you know, Karen out of the way. And uh, she'll be healed up next time, which is good. Lost some more rations to damn animals, which sucks, but oh well. Can't stop it from happening. You can only, you know, reduce it from happening. This long mountain here. It's a mountain. Alright, you can do some... Uh, what do I want you to do? Guarding, I guess. Because that'll help a little bit more. I only have a 1 in 5 chance of getting sto stuff stolen from me, right? So, do that. Okay, work our way around to here. And I'm just going to walk my way up this way. And camp. Looks like we found some rations on a soldier, which is very nice. This Aztec soldier business, by the way, there is no Aztecs on this, uh, on this piece of land, but it's sort of a carryover from like, the main continent, where you'll find like, the, you know, the main game coming from. All right, I don't see anything up in that direction just yet that really catches my interest, I don't think. But we'll go up here a little bit more. Okay, I can get up this way if I want to. Now let's go this way a little bit more. There's some gold and there's a cairn up there, so that's good to find. Now, here's a uh, contextual event that sometimes pops up. This is Raid to Burial Grounds. So natives have been known to bury their dead nearby, sending expeditions to search the graves of valuable trinkets. A high patrolling skill can uh, basically, um, and your own scouting can basically help get in, um, in potential loot, but uh, it's dirty work and it might hurt your guy's uh, reputation, so to speak. I feel like I'll have uh, Raina here maybe do it. Maybe she'll like doing that, I don't know. 
She's a narcissist, I know, so basically she might like going to be cho chosen for this task. Or she might lose morale. She could do that too. And she basically returned empty hand from the burial site, sadly, so well. Let's get over to this Karen. Now I see the road over here, which is good. Basically I wanted to get over to the road, so basically I could walk up the road this way from the main settlement next time I come up the mountain. And we got axe level 1, so we'll get more wood when we basically find wood on the ground. Hey, there's a watering hole, that's nice. And I can reach it too. Just barely, but it's enough. There's another Karen right there. Or actually, Karen I was actually looking for, so we'll go to it. So at this point, we have managed to chart at least seven of the ten Karens, so we're doing a pretty good job on that. The, the, the mountain Karens are actually really easy to get to. They're just, you know, they're all in the same area, so to speak. So you don't have to worry about flying them too much. Alright, um, let's have you work on the pickaxe here, I guess. And she'll work a little bit on that before she basically says, I can't do no more. Um, essentially with this, like, invention stuff, you need to have, like, a certain amount of tinkering to get up to, like, certain levels. So you need six tinkering to get up to, like, the level two of all this stuff. But for, like, the initial stuff, you're only need, like, two tinkering, so... You know, you only need so much tinkering to get to certain levels of, like, you know, this stuff. It's worth pointing out. Got some valuables from uh, Ban Hut, that's nice. And I see a Karen down there. That might be the one for the outskirts that I'm looking for, so... I'll try and get to that. There's a summon over there. So we're getting to that too. And because we got the road here, I can use the road to get really, really far on the ground. So we can basically run, run up right up to this very quickly. So basically when you see green on the ground, it means you're moving a lot faster than normal. Yellow means you're moving a lot slower at like normal speed, so to speak. It's common sense, roads increase movement speed. So that was Truck the Oscars. That's the last camp for that one. And you'll basically get to see what that's all about when I basically make camp for a night. Nice, a pig over there. Alright, so basically when you basically, you know, get the uh, Cairns all found for a certain, like, you know, uh, goal, you basically have to consult your maps. And basically just let you get increased experience for, like, you know, um, buying them all. So I'm going to have you do the uh, consolidating. And then, basically everyone will be the same as they are right now. So I'm going to consult, it, consult it the maps, get this uh, goal completed, and... Basically, as a result of doing that, I'm going to get a nice big experience bonus. I now have at least 100 experience for another upgrade, so I can get one of these other guys to be in our, a higher rank again. Um, at this point... I guess we probably want to get um, the other hunter here up in our, you know, level. But I'm really tempted to actually go after Castillus here, so she can do a little bit better in hunting. So, let's actually go to Castillus here. We're going to give her the next rank. And I think we'll give her a uh, good patient. So basically, the follower, the follower receives 20% um, more endurance from our doctors, abilities, and all injuries received in combat will be less severe. So basically, if she dies in combat, she'll get less you know, damage as a result. And then, you know, um, basically I won't, have, I won't worry too much if I bring her in, into combat, this one. So we get a little bit better hunting. And by the way, they game around when they get ranked up like that. They love getting ranked up. It's a good thing. And I'll help my hunting a little bit more. Let's go get this pig.
And let's make our way back over to uh, the summit. All right, let's go talk to the rich merchant then. So you take a deep breath and knock on the door to Marin Kokoro's house. He answers the door with a strange yet familiar mixture of horror and hopefulness on his face, though his hope is immediately reduced by the lack of his wife in your company. So you can be very blunt or you can just be, you know, afraid, so to speak. Let's be uh, very timid about this. So I'm afraid... The man says nothing. He simply stares at you, his face frozen somewhat between disbelief and horror. Your wife was killed in the mountains. Natives ambushed her patrol. There's no survivors. For a moment, you think he's going to break down and cry, but he barely recovers and reels his composure and honest effort. Thank you, Capitan. I can stop worrying now. Start grieving. Give him the medallion. You dig Louis's medallion out of your pack and hand it over to the widower. He clenches it in his hand, but he doesn't open it. I'm a wealthy man, Capitan. You deserve reward for giving me the closure that I needed to move on. My servants will bring you treasure to the caravan. With internal gratitude, now if you'll excuse me, I... Kokoro again just barely um, regains his composure. He nods once, suddenly mutters another thank you, then walks back into the house and closes the door eternally behind him. And we got a little bit of resources for that, we got a little bit of experience for the adventure. And, uh, you know, we're basically good on all that. So, let's go buy some equipment. Because I got lots and lots of stuff to buy. Um, I want to buy rations for sure, so we'll get that out of the way, I guess. We'll buy at least 40. And we'll start buying up a little bit of the, uh, you know, equipment over here. Yeah, let's buy that much. Let's buy 12. So I got very little valuables left, but I don't really use values any, uh, anything else, you know, I didn't buy equipment at the moment, so we'll do that for now. Equipment wise, let's get you up to maximum firepower. Now, I got 10 pieces of equipment. I could put it on a doctor here, but I really start should put, um, putting a little bit of equipment on my like soldiers. So let's see here. I think it might be best to put my stuff on Rita here. So let's go give her 10 armor. Now I'll help with her, like, you know, damage reduction, and she'll be a little bit more capable in combat. She'll probably be the first to get ranked up for my soldiers, too. Though I probably, um... It's probably better to rank up my one of these other soldiers here first, actually. Yeah, let's actually do that. I'm gonna put on one of these other guys. Um, you're basically peaceful, truly proud. You're open-minded, greedy, cautious. I think I'm going to give it to uh, Rosella Petadilla here, because she's basically got Proud Trait, and that's a really awesome trait if you like to fi fight battles and win them. And she'll be like the first soldier I'll try upgrading, I think, first. Alright, well that's it for this episode. We had a little fun with the natives in the mountains. May I actually do the uh, mountain quest. Next time I'll basically think push off... I don't know, maybe we'll push off in this direction, this way. Or maybe we'll do the Bibles, we could do that too. I'll find out next time. Let's uh, end it here. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.